I have a message for the people of Israel. I am on this planet to save Israel and to save the Jewish people. I am the Messiah and I bring a message from the Elohim. They asked me to build an embassy, which is the third temple close to Jerusalem. Israel is still protected by the Elohim, but if the government refused the authorization to build the third temple, the embassy of the Elohim, Israel will lost this protection from the Elohim. And it means that it will be destroyed. So, if you want to know exactly what is the message of the Elohim, who are the Elohim? Those who came from the sky a long time ago to create life on earth. Read this message. That man's name is Rael. He not only met with aliens, but he traveled to an alien planet where he met clones of Jesus, Buddha, and Muhammad and had sex with alien robots. My name is Brother B. Brown and I read all of his books because I don't I re, I don't know why. I don't know why. Asian Raelian You are in my heart in my heart forever. I love you, I love you, I love you. This is Rael, and besides being a very talented musician, he's also the founder and leader of the Raelians, a new religious movement with about 100,000 followers. The Raelians advocate things like social justice, LGBT rights, feminism, human cloning, and other cool things. Thank you for the followers of Rael believe he was contacted by an alien race called the Elohim and was tasked by them to prepare humanity for the arrival of aliens. Like many stories involving French people, the story begins in France in the 1970s. Before Rael was known as Rael, his name was Claude Varlhon, and that's a French name which is why it sounds so weird. Claude ran away from home at the age of 15 with the hopes of becoming a race car driver. To earn a living as well as to save up money for his first race car, Claude began to perform as a street musician. Now you might think that's not a very good way to get a race car, but actually it was, because Claude would be soon approached by Lucien Maurice, the director of the national radio program. Under Lucien's patronage, Claude's career began to take off. He released six singles and was coming close to being able to afford his first racing car. Tragically, however, by the September of 1970, it became clear that Mr. Lucien could no longer help Claude because Lucien had killed himself. With no other industry connections, Claude's career came to an abrupt end. Even though his manager and his career were both dead, Claude's passion for race cars lived on. So after saying goodbye to the music industry, Claude decided to start his own racing magazine. It was one day when he was driving to work as the owner of the racing magazine, he decided not to drive to work. I was going to my office like every morning and suddenly I had the feeling not to turn left to my office, but to turn right and to go to uh, a volcano. Mm -hmm. And then I saw a very strong flashing light in the sky and slowly uh, something like a flattened bell made of a very shining <coughs> silver metal came down and stopped at about uh, 30 meters from me. Mm -hmm. And somebody came out <coughs> of this, uh, this flying object. And uh, this, it was a small human being uh, with a very shining face, with a, a very, I don't know how to say that in English, a very Sorry. kind, very uh, f full of love face. Mm -hmm. And he came to me and he, he gave me the message. And Claude describes this encounter as well as the message given to him by the Elohim 
in his first book called The Book Which Tells the Truth. And it's called that because it tells the truth and it doesn't tell any lies. So the alien and Claude talk for the first time. I've asked my friend who can do a convincing French accent to narrate the dialogue between the two. I could see them. This was certainly no child, even though the figure was only about four feet tall. His eyes were slightly almond-shaped. His hair was black and long, and he had a small black beard. His skin was white, with a slightly greenish tinge, a bit like uh, someone with liver trouble. Claude and the alien then begin to talk. Why did you come here? Today, to talk to you. To me? Yes, you, Claude Varion, editor of a small motorsport magazine, married and father of two children. How do you know all that? We have been watching you for a long time. Why me? This is precisely what I want to tell you. Why did you come here on this cold winter morning? I don't really know. When I woke up this morning, I suddenly had an urge to come here. You came because I wanted to see you. Do you believe in telepathy? Yes, of course. It's something I've always been interested in, as well as the subject of flying saucers. But I never thought I'd see one myself. Well, I used telepathy to get you to come here. Because I have many things to tell you. Have you read the Bible? Yes, but why do you ask? Have you been reading it for a long time? No, as a matter of fact, I bought it only a few days ago. Why? I really don't know. Suddenly I had an urge to read it. Again, I use telepathy to make you decide to buy it. I have chosen you for a very difficult mission, and I have many things to tell you. So, come into my craft, where we can talk more comfortably. Inside the spaceship, the alien proceeds to go over the Bible, explaining its true meaning, while Claude takes notes. So, let us start with the first chapter of the book of Genesis. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1, 1. Elohim, translated without justification in some Bibles by the word God, means in Hebrew, those who came from the sky. And furthermore, the word is plural. It means that the scientists from our world searched for a planet that was suitable to carry out their projects. Turns out, 25,000 years ago, the Elohim came to Earth to conduct scientific experiments. They terraformed Earth, which was a giant ocean at the time, by making explosions on the ocean floor and piling up all the debris into one place to create continents. Then they began to create new life forms, for scientific reasons and for fun. The scientists spread out across this immense continent in small research teams. The most brilliant artists came and joined the scientists in order to give some plants purely decorative and pleasing roles, either through their appearance or their perfume. After the fish, they created birds! This was done under pressure, it must be said, from the artists who went out of their way to create the most stunning forms and the craziest colors. It is easy to work out how many teams of creators did this. Each race on Earth corresponds to a team of creators. The team located in the country you now call Israel was composed of brilliant creators who were perhaps the most talented of them all. Their animals were the most beautiful, and their plants had the sweetest perfumes. This was what you call paradise on earth. The human beings they created there were the most intelligent. Everything was going hunky-dory on earth. 
the scientists were making cool birds and were being racist to people. But people back home at the alien planet, they started to think, hmm, I don't like all of this, what's going on on Earth. They're making little people out of laboratories, make, making clones. What if these people find out about all of what's going on and get angry and try to attack us? On our home planet, people were outraged when they heard that we were making test tube children who might come to threaten their world. So, we had to agree to leave the new humans to live in a very primitive way without letting them know anything scientific. And we mystified our actions. So the scientists had to agree not to give any science facts or science lessons to the peoples that came out of the test tubes, the test tube children. Now, the Bible actually alludes to this in a little story called The Tree of Good and Evil, where Eve takes a tree, uh, take, takes an apple from the tree, and, um, and bad things happen. The scientific facts that people were denied is actually the tree of good and evil. The serpent is actually a group of scientists that have gone renegade and want to give scientific knowledge to people to make them all smart. The naughty renegade scientists began to secretly give scientific knowledge to the test tube children, specifically to the Israelites, because they are racist. The naughty and racist renegade scientists also began to have sex with the Israelites, creating human and alien hybrids. The people back on the Elohim home planet got all angry when they found out about all these renegade scientists giving out scientific trivia left and right. So they decided to put the hammer down and drop nuclear bombs on Earth, killing all life. Now a major nuclear holocaust was about to happen on Earth and the scientists did not like that because they made Earth. So they decided to warn people and one person in particular and that was Mr. Noah. Of course this is the story of Noah's Ark. If you consider the biblical story of Noah's Ark, you might find that there's a lot of inconsistencies. For example, if you watched The Lion King, you would know that lions and hyenas are natural enemies. How did No No Noah get the two in one boat? This could be only done by the use of some sort of magical staff, as was the case in the 2007 hit movie Evan Almighty. But even if that was the case, how would such an ark help Noah survive a nuclear Armageddon? The alien tells Claude a much more plausible version of the story. All Noe Noah had to do is collect DNA samples of every species of animal on Earth. Afterwards, he got on a spaceship and flew away before the Armageddon could hit Earth. When the nuclear holocaust was finished, all Noe Noah went back down on Earth and with the scientists' help, he cloned every species of animal back into existence. Easy. First thing Nono Noah does after coming back down to Earth is he builds a little altar to say thank you to the Elohim for saving him. Now this whole thing was done because the Elohim were scared that the humans were not going to be very friendly towards them. But the first thing Nono Noah does after coming back down to Earth and finding his world was destroyed and everybody on it died, he builds a little thank you note for them. So they kind of have egg on their face. So the Elohim feel really bad about everything and they promise never to ever, 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 never nuclear holocaust everybody ever again. So the world comes back to normal, people start making little cities again, and um, a lot of stuff happens. I'll just give you the abridged version of the real Bible. The story of Babel is about how the Israelites were too advanced because of all the alien hybrids. So the Elohim decided to scatter them all over earth. Sodom and Gomorrah were also cities that were very advanced, but they were also very angry with the Elohim because of all the nuclear holocausts. So the Elohim dropped nuclear bombs on them. Then the Elohim changed their mind about the Israelites. They appeared to a man called Moses and gave him the task of returning the Israelites back to Israel. With their help, Mama Mozo succeeds. But uh-oh, there's already people living in Jerusalem. So the Elohim killed them. 
this time with the use of ultrasonic waves. And then they drop bombs on them as well. King Solomon builds the first temple, which is actually an embassy, so that the Elohim have a place to stay and relax when they come to visit. Sometime later, they help out a guy named Samson. Samson communicates with the Elohim by the use of his long hair, which act as antenna. He was also a human-alien hybrid. However, one day, a lady called Delilah decided that Samson needed a haircut. When she cut his hair, he had no way to call for backup, and he had to wait for his hair to regrow in order to take vengeance on people who blinded him. This is also why Jews are told to not shave the sides of their head. That way, they can use their hair as antenna to communicate with aliens. I bet you didn't know that. Because the Elohim are trying to be more discreet, they help Elijah by the use of radio-controlled ravens. Jonah gets swallowed up by a whale, but actually it's a submarine that the Elohim used to talk to him in private. Now we're almost done with the Bible, but there's still one more very important person to discuss because he is the main hero of the Bible, and that is Mr. Jesus Christ. Now you may know Jesus Christ as the Son of God, but was he really the Son of God? Or was he the son of an alien? He was the son of an alien. Now picture this. Holy Mother Mary, Mother of God, is visited by an alien. And he says, I'm going to put a baby in you. And she says, all right. Did you picture that? Because that's what happened. That's... Elia had us had sex with Mary, Mother Mary, son of God, oh, daughter, mother of God. When Jesus, the alien hybrid, came of age, he was contacted by the aliens and told he's an alien hybrid. And also he, he was taught science. He was given a mission and that mission was he had to spread the religion of the Elohim all around the world. He healed the sick with the help of the Elohim who used concentrated beams of... <laughs> of what? That just says concentrated beams. Uh, he healed the sick with the help of the Elohim who shot concentrated beams from a distance. He walked on water with the help of anti-gravity beams. And um, yeah, at the end he was crucified so that in 1973 when the aliens landed in a volcano in front of Claude Farlhan, uh, all those stories from the Bible would make sense to him because Christ spread them uh, all around the world with, with his death. Uh, of course, he didn't actually die, or uh, he was cloned right afterwards, and is currently living on an alien planet. Um, and so the alien told some other stuff. I don't have time. I don't. I don't want to reread anything in my life. I don't ever read anything twice. So um, the alien told him. Pretty much, from what I can remember, uh, here's a cool symbol. It's a star of David with a swastika inside of it. Uh, change your name to Rael because it sounds cooler. And um, build the third temple, which will be an embassy. Build it in Jerusalem. What? Why didn't I go to somebody from Jerusalem? This is France? I don't know. And so Rael went into the world and he published his book. And people, of course, believed him. Some, well, some people believed him. And, um, and those were the intelligent people. I kid you not. Those were the smart people, and it says so in that book, that the smart people will believe you, and the d dumb people, the idiots, will not believe you. So if you don't believe that, you're a, you're an idiot. If you don't believe all of that, what just what I just said, in an animated, made a little st stupid um, 
took me hours. Took me hours. And if you don't believe that, you're an idiot. According to that alien. No, 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 no. That's not where the story ends at all. You you want it to end there. You want it to end. I, I want it to end. You... But that's not where the story ends. Because Rael is visited, is visited a second time. In Rael's second book, which is called The Extraterrestrials Took Me to Their Planet, but in French. Uh, that's what happens. It's the fucking... T- it's in the title. Read the, read the title, you read the book. I read the book. Rael is met by the alien again, and he is congratulated. He's told he did a great job. He did a great job. And uh, the, the aliens are very happy, very with, happy him. with you. And so as a reward, they decide to take him to see the paradise planet where Jesus and Muhammad and Buddha all vibe together. They arrive at the planet and all the holy people come out to meet them and they're all naked um and they have slaves uh the slaves are robots and um they are also naked then they uh, fly around a bit they have belts that let them fly around rael goes to his room where he's staying and he has uh sex with alien robots over there and um when it's time to go the alien that rael has been talking to this whole time pulls him aside and um Jesus Jesus is also there and the alien explains that actually the alien is the father of Rael. It's his dad he was talking to this whole time and Jesus is his brother or half half brother and his and the alien's name is Yahweh which is one of the names of God in, in Hebrew. So Rael gives Yahweh and uh, Jesus a hug and uh, goes home. So there you go. Uh, In the end, Rael did get his wish. Some wealthy Raelians all chipped in and bought him his own racing car. So his childhood dream was fulfilled. Um, I guess plenty of people, even 50 years later, believe this to be true. Uh, I'm I'm not personally very convinced, but... I don't think his stories really need to be convincing. Um, I think they just have to reach a certain type of person who is willing to believe in anything as long as uh, they feel a part of something bigger. So, there we go. We don't want to convert other people, we just spread the information. You, you like it, welcome. You don't like it, we don't try to convert people because we are just on this planet to find the 4% of people who are ready and who want to escape from tradition. Mm-hmm. Because you, you have to be very courageous to, to say, okay, let me try to understand something new. It's not everybody can do that. Hey, it's me back. I'm back. Um, sorry about the the ending of this video. It kind of got derailed. Uh, it took a lot out of me for some reason. I it really got to me on a personal level. This video. Um, it uh, 
So I'm, I'm better now. I'm wearing a hat. Uh, it's too small. Uh, but it's the thought that matters. So... Um, I'm not going to ask you to like this video. But it'd be real nice if you did. Thank you.